what are some of the things that you guys um, have done, whether it be with New Zealand Rugby Football Union or in any of your other roles, um, to sort of take on that responsibility of um, the, the 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 overall well being of your athletes? Well, we've we've put it up in lights more recently probably than uh, we d- we did in the past, but even way back in the, the mid nineties when the game first turned professional, and I had that opportunity to be involved in the early days with the Crusaders. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to have a bit of time visiting professional sport franchises around the world. I spent a bit of time in the US, and, and, I, and I don't mean to be critical, but one thing that struck me uh, in your country was the, the very high statistics around um, ex-athletes being unemployed, divorced, bankrupt, alcohol, drug addictions, suicide. Um, that seemed to me to be a, 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 you know, something we could learn from. So very early on, we started looking at what kind of uh, programs we could put around players to help them better prepare for life, not just after rugby, but life around rugby. Because, you know, it's very early to, and, and nowadays with talent ID being so sharply focused on young people, um, you're telling a kid very early on, they may or may not be able to, you know, they may be able to be a professional sports person and you don't need them then to give up everything else because this is the holy grail, right? It's not going to be a career forever. You are a selection or injury away from that being over. And you need to be better positioned to deal with that um, when you finish. But more importantly, and I think this is really where the whole well-being debate in New Zealand is going, It's because it, be it shouldn't be a compliance thing for a sport, right? Have we got all the well-being stuff done that we need to do to look after our kids? Actually, it should be ingrained in your culture. It should be ingrained in your environment. It should be authentic and organic. If you genuinely care for your people and do the sort of things, and these cost money, so resourcing is always an issue. But if you do the sort of things that are going to help your athletes be better people while they're with you, better able to deal with everything that's going on in their lives, including the time they don't spend actually training and and playing, competing, then they're going to be better athletes anyway. They're more likely to be able to sustain a longer career. They're more likely to be able to handle the pressure when it's on them in competition if they've got everything in balance off field got it and so what are some of the themes for you then that have stood out for you as being pivotal in driving success in those various different businesses that you um you know that you've nurtured and grown yeah um honestly it's it's teamwork right it's finding the right team because you know there's an old saying uh, there's a book uh, I can't remember the name of it. Good to Great, I think, by Jim Jim Collins. This is like, get the right people on the bus. Get the right people on the bus, you're halfway there. So, you know, I think there was this spirit that we had to just never really give up and just to make it happen and be okay with failure and just kind of keep keep turning up. So I think, I think that was a part of it as well. But, like, we just had a lot of confidence in ourselves because we just thought, well, what have we got to lose? For me, it's about really... If you don't know where you're going, all roads will take you there. So everything starts with purpose. My first belief is everything starts with purpose. And I and that's never changed. I've always felt, right? I mean, if you go into Pep Guardiola's office, I do a lot of work there with the coaching the coaches at the academy. And you go into Pep's office and on the whiteboard, it's written, first you have to know what to do then you have to know how to do it. How comes second? It's the what that counts. So for me, it's always been about, let's all start with a shared purpose. And telling is not sharing. You've got to share it, right? You can't just put it up in the toilet or on a screen and expect people. uh, Telling them is not it. Let's share that purpose, share who we are, share what we believe, share what we're trying to do. And then we can figure out how to do it tactically any day of the week. There is nothing like the feeling of having um, a crew and a team that is operating at the absolute top of its game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the it's one of the it's one of the best the best feelings in the world. I think as a as a, a boss or a manager in that situation, sometimes you sometimes I say to myself if I'm if I'm not feeling 100% confident or on top of it, I say to myself, what do these people need from me now? What are they expecting to see to knit them together? Um, you know, are they feeling ner- nervous? Are they feeling anxious? Are they feeling uh, concerned? And if they are, how do they want me to come across? 
Now, I'm not saying they want, they want me to bluff it and put on a big smile when everything's not okay, but they need someone who's going to stand up there, be counted, and tell them that under no uncertain terms, I have got your back, and we've got this together.